Hello, my name is Remy, and today we're going to be ranking all of the Burzum albums from worst to best. Yes, the legendary one-man black metal band Burzum, led by the extremely controversial figure Varg Vikernes, a legend in a world of black metal, and the previous member of Mayhem. I'm going to be ranking his Burzum works from worst to best, including the 12 studio albums and one EP he's released in the span of 28 years. So let's not waste any more time and let's get into the ranking. At number 13 we have The Ways of Yore, released in 2014. This was Vark's second ambient slash dungeon synth album after the Black Metal trilogy that took place in the early 2010s and it was released just a year after Sol Astan Mani Vestan. This is easily Vark's weakest effort to date and the only album on this list I would straight up call bad. It's just not a very good listen, the ambient soundscapes are super repetitive and uninteresting. The concept of the record doesn't intrigue me in any way, shape or form and the whole thing just feels like a chore to get through. It's an hour and 8 minutes of extremely boring dungeon synth ambient music that really drags the longer it goes on. I do not like this one in the slightest. Coming in at number 12 is Vark's last album under the Burzum name called Thulian Mysteries, released in 2020. Vark announced this would be a soundtrack to his RPG game, as well as the last album that would ever come out under the Burzum name. And for such an iconic black metal act, Thulian Mysteries is an unbelievably mediocre finish. All of the criticisms I've had for The Ways of Yours still stand on this album. Both of them sound extremely similar. This one has a bit more flavor to it I feel like though, with some of Burzum's best dungeon synth ambient tracks appearing on this track list, such as the Tholian Perspective. But the issue is that th there's only a couple of those and the whole album is an hour and 30 minutes long and it's clouded by so many mediocre and undercooked tracks. It makes up for such a mediocre album, unfortunately. Next up at number 11 I have Sol Astan Manivastan, hope I pronounced that correctly, I don't think so, but anyway. It was released in 2013, this was Vark's first album after the BM Black Metal trilogy, and it was rather underwhelming. I'm not going to talk about it too much since it's pretty much the exact same as the previous two albums on this list. The only reason it's higher is because it's shorter and it has a bit more of an interesting aesthetic, but overall it's still quite a mediocre listen. Moving on to number 10, we have the 2011's Fallen. A lot of people would consider this uh, to be one of Varg's best post-prison era albums, but I don't feel that way in the slightest. Outside of Jack Fowler, Fallen is a dreadfully boring album, and while it's only 47 minutes long, it feels like an hour and a half. The addition of clean vocals is a cool idea in retrospect, but when you listen to the entire project, there's nothing cool or interesting about it. It's just very boring and that's it. Next up at number 9 we have the 2010's Abelus, which is quite similar to Fallen but a bit more interesting I feel like. I'm still not in love with this album, but I find it to be a pretty okay listen, to be honest. It sounds fine and is an admirable effort, but it ends up being quite undercooked and out of touch, especially as Vark's first black metal album in 14 years at that point. It's his first album after he got released from prison early, and it's nothing to write home about despite being a decent listen. At number 8 I have Dottie Baldur's, released in 97, only one year after Philosophum and is Varg's first album that was recorded strictly only in prison with his keyboard that he was allowed to have in jail. It's honestly quite overhated and really not as bad as people make it out to be. Yes, it sounds very midi and stock, but some of the songs here have quite an interestingly intoxicating and mysterious vibe to them that only really appear on this album strictly. Songs like Harmoon a Hell Pharaoh and Balfaro Balders are both great examples of that. They pull off this very depressing and mysterious feeling which feels quite powerful despite the track is literally just repeating itself constantly. The other tracks aren't that bad either and honestly, while Dottie Balder suffers from the obvious lack of equipment, I find his album to be perfectly listenable. Next at number 7 I have Burzum's self-titled debut album called Burzum. And while this project is extraordinary influential and important in the black metal scene, I don't find it to be particularly interesting. There are some classic tracks on here like EA, Lord of the Depths or War, but a lot of the other songs are just okay. 
Uh, still, it's a pretty decent black metal album in the end, but it's a sound that Varg would later perfect on other records following this debut. At number six, I have, uh, hope I pronounced this right, Helios Clive. No, I, I fucked that up. Uh, from 1999, which is the second album Varg released and created in prison. And this one is uh, much better than Dottie Ballers. I feel like the soundscapes are much more developed, and it's honestly quite impressive he managed to make an album this transportive and atmospherically textured despite having limited equipment. It's not mind blowing or anything, but almost every song on here is a very nice ambient listen. And while I wouldn't necessarily come back to any of these tracks, whenever they come on I enjoy them quite a bit. The synth work is quite nice and the atmosphere is encapsulating. So yeah, I, I enjoy it a decent amount. Next up at number 5 we have the 2012's Umskiptar, which is in my opinion Vark's best album since Philosophum. And that's strange to say considering how weird this album sounds. It's the last in the black metal trilogy, but it barely even sounds like a black metal album. While I wasn't so on the first half since a lot of the tracks seemed quite standard person tracks, the magic really started happening in the second half with songs like Gulald and Valgalder that have a really striking and intriguingly beautiful sounds. One is heavier and the other one is more atmospheric, but both are some of the Varg's best songs he's ever made. It's kind of a shame that the rest of this album doesn't really live up to those tracks and instead it's just kind of passable and listenable. But still, I enjoy this album a decent amount and I really admire uh, uh, its experimental nature. I feel like it worked out quite well. I don't love the album, but I think it's pretty good and definitely the best one out of the Black Metal trilogy following his release from prison. At number four, I have not an album, but an EP, that being Aske from 1993. And I thought it was valid to include this on here since it's quite an important EP in the black metal scene. I don't have much to say about it other than that it's some really well made black metal that feels really dark. And I love the track Stem Fra Tarnet. I don't know why I said that like it was in French, but that one is great. <laughs> Overall, this is a very good black metal EP from Burzum. Moving on to the top three, taking on the third place is none other than Vesit Liset Tar Os which I wasn't quite as mind blown by as Burzum's number one album, but this is still a really striking record by him with an atmosphere that sounds like a chilling windstorm, fuzzy riffs and some insanely forward thinking ideas for the genre. But it's not quite the peak of this sound for Burzum since he would go on to make one more album that would squeeze the maximum efficiency out of this sound. But before we get into that album, and number two, we have uh, the record that was released a year prior to the last one called Dead Sum in Gang War, uh, which is quite great and super raw black metal album with some of my favorite songs in the entire genre, such as Lost Wisdom and End Ring Till Aherske. It's a really good album uh, that I enjoy from front to back. It feels extremely raw and has a tone of energy to it while uh, retaining a good amount of replay value also. I really like this one. And finally, at number one on the list, as many of you might have expected, is of course Philosophim from 1996. This is the definitive Burzum album and is also one of the best in the entire genre. Philosophum defined the sound of 90s black metal with a viciously atmospheric and ear piercing sound, utilizing raw and fuzzy guitar tones, pained and heavy shrieking, all accompanied by a depressing and huge atmosphere, also incorporating elements of dungeon synth to add on to the heavy riffs and vocals. This album is brilliant and the first three tracks on it are the best songs black metal has to offer in general with the most iconic and groundbreakingly incredible riffs and vocals. I will never get tired of Dunkelheit or any of the other tracks. The songs have such an incredibly dark and twisted atmosphere to them. It feels like walking through a gale or a tempest. It's just brutal. And to combine that brutal sound, you have songs like track 5, which is this 25 minute long ambient piece that is also the best ambient song Varg has ever created. And while tracks 4 and 6 aren't quite as mind blowing, Philosophum is overall still a mind blowing release with some absolutely iconic tracks on it and an unbelievable atmosphere that has yet to be replicated to this day. So yeah, that was my ranking of Burzum discography. Uh, comment your ranking down below in the comments. Follow me on Album of the Year, uh, which you can see every single review I've done to most of these Burzum albums. If you want to hear my thoughts even more in depth and also subscribe to my channel. I'll see you soon in the next video. Bye.